Hello and welcome, this is a video for required practical number five for AQA GCSE science for combined science biology students and for triple science biology students as well. This is called enzymes. The whole point of this experiment is to investigate the effect of pH on the rate of reaction of the enzyme called amylase. This is quite tricky if you were to try and follow it from a list of instructions. So we're going to look at it visually via some animations and then we'll make a list of how the experiment is done. So some background information. Starch can be broken down by the enzyme called amylase into sugars. Amylase breaks down starch. Here is a starch solution or starch suspension. We can use iodine solution to test for the presence of starch. So iodine will be orange to start with and it will turn to blue-black when starch is present. So here we can do a little test and we can see it's turned blue-black to show that starch is present. If there is no starch present, we can see that the iodine remains an orange colour. The iodine solution stays orange when the starch is no longer present. We also need to remember that amylase is an enzyme so it's affected by temperature and by pH. So let's take a look at the method in a visual way. Here we have three test tubes and we have three solutions. The first one is starch solution, the second one is what's called a buffer solution and the buffer solution has the job of setting the pH. So the buffer solution sets the pH. And then we have our amylase solution. We can then label our test tubes as starch, buffer and amylase and we can put some starch solution into our starch test tube, some buffer solution into our buffer test tube and amylase into our amylase test tube. We would then put all of these into a water bath at 35 degrees. We're going to try and maintain the temperature at 35 degrees Celsius and we would place a thermometer in the starch test tube and wait till the temperature reaches 35 degrees Celsius. While we're waiting for that, we would set up a spotting tile. Now a spotting tile looks a little bit like this in real life. It's a small tile with some wells in it. And to give you an idea of the size, there's a pencil there next to it, just as a comparison. We are looking at this spotting tile from above. So while we're waiting for the temperature to reach 35 degrees C, we can add a drop of iodine into each of those wells. So one drop into each of those wells until all of them have been filled. So once our temperature has reached 35 degrees Celsius for our starch solution, we can begin. The first thing we do is to mix the buffer and the amylase and the starch. So they all go into the starch test tube. And we would then take a reading immediately and we would call that naught seconds or our start point and add a drop of starch solution with the buffer and the amylase to our first well. You can see that it's got a blue-black colour, that means starch is present. We would start a timer immediately and after 30 seconds we would take a second sample and you can see there is still starch present there and every 30 seconds we would add a drop to our iodine solution in the spotting tile. You can see at 90 seconds the starch is almost digested and then when we go to 120 seconds, it's been completely digested. There is no more starch present. It's all been digested or broken down into sugars. So we can see that the time to break down starch is 120 seconds for our first pH. We would repeat this whole experiment with different pH buffer solutions. So now we can write down the method. 1. Place 2 cm cubed of starch solution, pH buffer solution and 1 cm cubed of amylase solution to test tubes in a water bath at 35 degrees Celsius. We would add iodine solution to a spotting tile while we're waiting for the temperature to reach 35 degrees Celsius. And once the solutions reach 35 degrees, we would mix them and start a timer. We would use a pipette dropper to add a drop of the mixture to the iodine. If starch is present, the mixture and iodine solution turns blue-black and we will continue until the iodine solution and the mixture remains yellow-orange or a yellow-orangey-brown colour. Each one of those is acceptable. We tend to stick with orange. We record the time taken for the mixture to remain orange 
and then we repeat at five different pHs, e.g. 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. Those are examples. We have control variables. These are variables that we keep the same. These are the temperature, the volume of starch, iodine, amylase, and buffer solutions, and the concentration of starch, iodine, amylase, and buffer solutions. We have a source of error in this experiment. It's difficult to judge the exact time the starch is broken down. This is because it's done by eye. We can have improvements to this. We could use shorter time intervals for sampling the starch solution, for example, every 15 seconds instead of every 30 seconds. We can use more pH values in between the ones used, for example, 6 and 8. So we would have 5, 6, 7 and 8. And we would repeat and take a mean for accuracy and to spot any anomalous results. Other experiments that we could do would be to see the effect of temperature. We'd do the same experiment, but we would use water baths at different temperatures and keep the pH the same this time. So these are the details of the investigation of the rate of reaction of the enzyme amylase. Let's take a look at some exam questions. So here we go. Here are some questions. You can pause here and give these a go, and we'll go through those in a moment. So question number one. A student investigated the effect of pH on the breakdown of starch by amylase. And we can see a table of results there. For 1.1, we can see that the question says at which pH did the amylase work most rapidly, and that's for one mark. Well, if we take a look at pH 6, the time for starch to break down is the lowest, it's at 45 seconds, so that's where it worked most rapidly. So the answer for that is pH 6. 1.2, what could be done to get a more accurate value of pH at which amylase worked fastest? Well, we could repeat the experiment at smaller intervals of pH, or we could say, repeat the experiment with pH 5.5 and 6.5. 1.3, explain the reason for the temperature of each pH value. That's worth two marks. This is because temperature is a control variable or is kept the same. And we do that so it doesn't affect the time for starch to break down because temperature affects enzyme action as well. That will get you the two marks. For 1.4, in a separate experiment, the student investigated the effect of temperature on amylase activity. Now we're testing temperature and not pH. By time, we mean the time taken for amylase to completely break down the starch. So which graph shows the expected result? Tick the correct box. We can see here that the correct box is the second one, top right. As the temperature increases, the time taken for the starch to completely break down reduces. After a certain temperature, it increases because we have denaturing of the enzyme. 1.5. The student could not measure a result for a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius. Explain why. This is worth three marks. This is because amylase did not work because it is denatured. The active site has changed shape, so the substrate no longer fits. So that will get you the three marks for that question there. So just add our tick mark so that we know where the marks are available. And that's your exam question for our required practical number five about enzymes. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.